What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about two trades that I made today on the 8th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that performed well today, and that I personally see potential in here over these next couple of weeks, heading off into the middle of March in 2019. But before we do get into all of these topics, Topics, guys, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. Not only does it support me as a creator, it lets me know whether or not I'm doing a good job here on YouTube, providing valuable content, helpful content out there to all of you subscribers and new viewers that are watching. And if you're a new viewer, actually, and you want to join our free communities down below, there are two links, the Discord group chat and the Facebook group. Again, both of those are linked down below and they are 100% free. Feel free to join those up to you and let's get started with today's video. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We ended up closing the day today down about $5.86, down about 0.21%. The Dow Jones ended up closing the day down about $23, down about 0.09%. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, we can see it's currently up about 50 cents up around 0.01%, but this is the future, and if we look on the one day, one minute here, we can see, you know, it did have a nice big run here, so where did it close? Did it end up closing? Yeah, it ended up closing about minus 10 points, so we can see after market hours here, we did end up moving an extra 10 points in terms of the NASDAQ composite, but this is not telling us the entire story of what ended up happening today. If you just, if you just look you know, at the closing prices of the three major indices we talk about on this channel, you'd be like, okay, today wasn't too bad of a day, but that's false because earlier on in the day, we were having a big, big sell-off. We can see this gap down in the SPX from about the close price yesterday at around $2,750 all the way down to about $2,723. So we did have about a 27-point drop this morning in terms of the SPX. And we can see on this intraday chart here, we had trouble breaking below this support level with three different bottoms, one in the morning, roughly at about 9.35 a.m. Eastern Standard. The second one being at around 27.23, again, at about 10.07. And the third time we ended up holding that support was more towards the later afternoon, right around 1.05 p.m. Eastern Standard. And from there, we had a big, big run all the way back up to yesterday's support, which is obviously a resistance right now on these smaller term frames. And if we're taking a look on this SPX chart on the bigger, broader basis here, we've been talking about the potential sell-off and further sell-off that we're seeing here in the S&P 500 based off of these technicals. And for those of you guys that are new to the channel, missed the past couple of videos, we've been you know, identifying multiple indications here, indicators that the SPX was selling off. If you guys recall about three, four days ago, we were calling out this double top here as a potential bearish sign for the SPX. And then the next day after we saw that, we broke below the 50 SMA and the EMA support levels. We ended up breaking below the support of this channel that we've been watching here on the 30-day, 90-minute chart the day after that. And pretty much every single day, guys, it feels like we've been getting further and further indications that we're selling off, you know, in terms of this major indice. And then yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. We ended up breaking the 50 SMA support here. Actually, no, that was two days ago. And then yesterday, we ended up breaking this new support below the 50 SMA here at the previous resistance from back in the beginning of February, right at around 2741. We broke below that. So that was about four or five indicators that we were selling and continuing to sell off in terms of the SPX. But what are we seeing right now, guys, with that nice run towards the end of the market here, the latter half of the day? We're trending right around 
that same that same point at about 2740 and right now it's acting as a resistance point since we broke below it obviously when we break below a support level it becomes a new resistance and that's exactly where we are right now in terms of the SPX so technically guys on a technically on a technically uh, speaking basis here we are not really looking at any support levels anytime soon until about $2,690. Actually, no, that's false. Probably around $2,700 in terms of the SPX. So if we did sell off next week, you know, down to about $2,700, that wouldn't really shock me, right? But if we pop up above $2,740 next week and start to trend back up towards that 50 SMA, maybe about $2,000. 15, 20 points above where we are right now, that wouldn't shock me either. And if that ended up happening, we would be looking at 2740 as a new support level again. And that will change, you know, our technical perspective of what is going on. But as of right now, at the close, we're still trending below this resistance with the next potential support we're heading to if we continue to sell off at around $2,700. And if we're taking a look on a closer term basis here, we actually ended up breaking the 50 SMA resistance on this five day, five minute chart, which was actually a really critical resistance point over the past couple of trading days, in particular, the past three trading days, right? We can see the 6th of March here, we struggled to break above that level. The next day, we gapped down, struggled to break above the level. Today, we gapped down again, we struggled to break above the level, but we saw those three different bottoms at that support level and then we ended up popping above the 50 SMA so that's a good sign on a smaller term time frame basis here that we could potentially be heading back up in terms of the SPX but we're also at this resistance here under the 180 SMA so this is a very critical point for you guys to be keeping an eye on and I'm keeping an eye on this myself throughout the next week here and those are the levels guys I'm waiting for and looking at in terms of the SPX here on all of these different charts so the down Dow Jones, very similar to the SPX guys, right? We got multiple indications over the past couple of di trading days that we were selling off. We got the double top, the break below the 50 SMA and EMA support levels. We got the break below the channel yesterday. We got the break, or two days ago, we got the break below the 50 SMA here. And then yesterday, we got the break below this support level, which was a previous resistance from the beginning of February at about $25,400. We broke below that, and now we're trending right back at that level, treating it as a resistance point. So in terms of the Dow Jones chart, it's looking very similar, right? Looking very, very similar to the SPX we can see on the five day, five minute. It's like we're looking at the same exact chart, right? We're trending below or we were trending below these resistance levels at the 50 and the 180 SMAs. We popped up above it today on this triple bottom here that we saw, you know, up until the latter half in the middle of the day today. <clears throat> we broke above the 50 SMA and now we're testing that 180 SMA resistance. So tomorrow, or not tomorrow, guys, I wish the market was open tomorrow. I honestly wish the market was open all week, but Monday, guys, we're going to be looking for a potential pop up here and a potential test on the 50 SMA resistance. Or if we don't get that, let's say we get rejected and we continue to push down, the level I'm going to be waiting for to see potentially we're heading to next Roughly at about $25,000 in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And talking about the NASDAQ here very quickly, guys, we did see a very nice bounce on the 180 simple moving average support here on the 184 hour chart. It's looking like we're also holding above this previous support or previous resistance rather at about 6,900. Although we didn't get all the way down to it, the fact that we're holding above that level, that is a good sign that we could potentially be heading back up in terms of the NASDAQ. And just like the Dow, just like the SPX guys, the NASDAQ is no different. We've been getting signs of indications and indicators that were pulling back over the past couple of days and we saw the huge sell-off yesterday we actually dropped more than the Dow and the SPX yesterday in terms of the NASDAQ we dropped about 1.3 percent I believe at the close of the day and the fact that we're holding this 180 SMA support guys very good sign that we could potentially be heading back up next week and I'm watching this potential pop-up 
to the 50 SMA support or resistance rather? Are we going to break above that to potentially test $7,100 again? That's what I'm watching next week. And of course, if we break to the downside here, that's not going to be too good on a technical basis. We'll be testing that support at around $6,900 at that point. And if we break that level, that's going to be very, very bad for the NASDAQ on a technical basis. So that's what I ended up trading, not trading, that's what the overall markets are looking like, guys. I've recorded a couple different videos today, so my mind's a little bit uh, jumbled here, but that's what the market's looking like. You know, the end of the day, the closing price doesn't really tell the entire story. We were looking like we were having a bloody red day this morning, but things ended up swinging back up. Things ended up turning around, which is a pretty good sign here that the markets could potentially be heading back up uh, this next week, and only time will tell, of course. Course, the futures, what we're going to be looking at, large cap stocks, pre-market hours, and of course, the futures market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. That's where we'll be able to see, you know, some of these market futures and to see where the market could potentially be headed over the next couple of, uh, or really the next week. And that's what we're going to be doing, you know, in terms of uh, next week. So what did I end up trading today, guys? Well, for those of you all that have been watching the channel for a while, or really the past week and a half, two weeks, you know that I took a position in Coca-Cola. Well, that position, guys, didn't really go too uh, well for me. It didn't go as planned. The technicals from the jump weren't looking that great. I ended up getting in you know, on this $45 support level, I built a small position with hopes of it getting above the $46 level for me to add more money. That did not end up happening whatsoever. We can see actually a very clear rejection at that level, which honestly led me today to really break even and take a very minimal loss here on Coca-Cola stock. But for those of you guys that know my swing trading strategy, you know that I always enter in with an initial position that is about 10 to 15% of my goal position. So let's say, for example, $10,000 is my goal position for Coca-Cola. I entered in with $1,500 to $2,000, which in this case, guys, really helped me out because let's say you do enter in with an initial position that's smaller and the stock doesn't go your way and you have to cut your losses, you know, you're not going to lose as much money as let's say you put in $10,000 right off the bat and that same stock went down, you'd obviously lose more money that way, which is a, you know, really important in my opinion to just scale into your positions, right? This way, you can really just either average down if you want to. You can add more as the stock continues to push up. And this way, you really just protect your capital. And this is something that I've been doing, and it really helps me out, and it really works. And in this case, guys, you know, it really helped me out because I ended up taking the minimal loss. It was really, really not even that big of a loss whatsoever because I got out at about $49, and not $49, $44.90 cents, which was very, very small, guys, because again, I got in at about $45 last week at this point, I think it was, and, uh, you know, from $45 down to $49.50 or $49, uh, not $49, why do I keep saying $49, $44.90, that's literally a 0.2% loss, and you may be asking, like, Stas, why did you prematurely cut your losses on this one? Why didn't you just ride it out, wait for the stop loss? Because if we're just judging on this five-day, five-minute chart, guys, you know, Coca-Cola... Let's be honest, it's on a downtrend based off of these three, you know, previous trading days, right? We can see during these times I was comfortable to hold it because we weren't moving up very quickly, but we weren't really selling off and we weren't really downtrending. We were really slowly pushing up, which is something that I wanted to see for a potential break above $46. And we can see this day on the 6th of March, we did not get above $46. We actually topped off here. And then on this big, on, on this five minute, five, uh, five day, five minute chart, we can see the break below the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA. And that led to the next day, which led to today. And the fact that we kept getting rejected and we kept, kept pushing down. I just wanted to take my loss cut it right there, and potentially re-enter if we got out of this downward trending pattern on the five-day, five-minute. We obviously did not. We downtrended for the rest of the day pretty much all the way to 44.60. And if I had held, guys, you know, I would have been down about 1%, roughly 0.9%. 
on the position, but I feel better with, you know, taking that very minimal loss now and just waiting to re-enter. And this is something that I do sometimes, right? I don't always just let it ride out to hit my stop loss. You know, sometimes I, you know, set a manual stop, not manual. I, I you know, cut my losses like myself, right? I don't really just let it hit the stop loss all the time. And this way, you know, I can get in at a better price if I do, you know, think about it, right? If I do think about it and want to get back in, I can get back in if I want to. So that's what I did in terms of Coca-Cola, guys. And the other one that I ended up trading today, guys, was Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. And Tesla did very, very well today. We can see here on the intraday, one day, one minute chart, beautiful uptrend, higher highs, higher lows for the entire day. We can see it held the 180 SMA all day as a support level was pushing up. We actually pushed up all the way to 285, 286, you know, pretty much, you know, with about 30 minutes left in the market here. And we can see Tesla's been trading in between this little channel here, between 270, Five, roughly 270 275 up to about 284 roughly 285 right we can see that very clearly and the fact that we bounced here this morning at about 275 showed me that we're holding that support and we're slowly filling back up to the top resistance level you know really just filling that gap from 270 back up to 282 283 so that's really what I was waiting for today guys and this setup was looking very very solid from the get-go right we can see the pullback the bounce the hold above the support really the hold at the support from yesterday at about 275 very nice we were pushing up pushing up pushing up and I ended up just taking a very small day trade today you know, in Tesla. I got in earlier on this morning on this pullback from 280 to 276. This opened up that margin of profit and I got in roughly at about 277.50 and I just wrote it up through this pullback here and I ended up popping it up at about $280. That's where I ended up taking my profits and we can see not too big of a trade here, about a 0.75, 0.8% trade. And I'm very comfortable with taking my profits there, guys, especially on a Friday. For all you guys that don't know, on Friday, I tend to not try and force things. I tend to not be greedy. Well, I'm not really greedy at all, but especially on Fridays, guys, I tend to be less greedy than my ungreedy self that I'm already ungreedy, if that makes any sense, right? So I tend to just be very conservative on Fridays. I took that little profit there. I took the loss on Coca-Cola. And that's really what I ended up doing today in terms of Tesla. And this leads me into some stocks that I'm watching for this upcoming week. And Tesla is actually at the top of my list for a potential swing trade. So Tesla right now is looking very good, guys, on a technical basis. We can see, like I said, the hold above the 275 support. We're breaking above that 282, 283 level here after market hours with that push in the last 20, 30 minutes of the market, which is a good sign that we're plowing through these resistance levels. And now if we hold this level, this is what I'm waiting for this upcoming week. If we hold the 285 level, as a new support, I really think Tesla can get back into the 290s and potentially break above the 50 SMA to test the top resistance portion of this downwards trending channel, roughly at about $300. I think that's very, very possible, especially again, if we hold the 280 level and we don't and we don't dip down back into the 270s. So Tesla, I'm watching Tesla, you know, very closely for this upcoming week. Another one I'm watching this upcoming week, guys, is TVIX. And for all you guys that don't know, TVIX is a market ETF trades very closely based upon the SPX, the S&P 500. Whenever the S&P 500 selling off, TVIX is going up in price. And let's say the markets do sell off on Monday. Let's say we don't get above this level. We get we get another red day. We start to sell off to the next support at about $2,700. What is that going to do? That's going to open up a ton of margin for profit on TVIX. And at that point, guys, TVIX is going to break out of this 180 SMA resistance, which we can clearly see it got rejected at today. And at that point, this one can continue to run if the markets continue to sell off from there. And that is one that I'm watching very, very closely for this upcoming week. So another one I'm watching, guys, 
is going to be Kron. Kron, actually, CGC as well, and ACB Aurora Cannabis. These are all at levels right now, and especially CGC. This could be a breakout pattern in the making right here. Take a look at this wedge right here. We're either going to pop up above here. Well, it's looking like we're already holding the support here on the bottom portion of this wedge. And if we end up popping out and popping up here and especially breaking out of this resistance, this one could be a runner back up into the $50 range, maybe $51, $52. Just keep an eye on the potential hold above this support and heading back into the $46, $47 level in terms of CGC. We can see Cron here, Kronos Group, guys. We got the pullback, even further pullback today of about 2.53%, but we're still holding that 50 SMA support. So if we pop up back until let's say the $22 level, that could be a good entry point back up to the $23 level and ultimately back up to the all-time highs at about $24.50 to $25. Ticker symbol CRON, watching that one very closely. And for all you guys that don't know, marijuana stocks, they tend to get very, very hot, right? They get hot. They can run 10, 15, 20% in a single day. So keep an eye, guys. These One of these could potentially be a runner next week. They tend to run a lot sometimes. So we can see ACB is another one on a nice pullback here. This one actually had a red day today, up about 2.24%. And we're going to be looking for a potential fill back up to about 825. So from where we are right now, up to 825 roughly, that offers about a 6% margin of profit. So that's looking pretty solid in terms of ACB. And that's going to be it for today's video, guys. If you guys want me to talk about more stocks, there's going to be a video on Sunday where I'm going over some stocks I'm watching for that week and I also talk about stocks that you guys shout out to me either on Discord in the comment section here on YouTube on this video so drop a comment down below right now if you guys want me to talk about any specific stocks I'll talk about them in Sunday's video but for all you guys that don't know on Sunday again market update video as well as what stocks I'm watching for that upcoming week so be tuned for that. Stay tuned. And tomorrow, I'm coming out with a video on where to buy and where to sell stocks in terms of trading stocks, how to determine you know, risk reward, how to determine entry points, all of that jazz. So that's coming out tomorrow at around 11, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be in tuned for that. But that's all for the updates, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, Feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Both of those are linked down below in the description box. <clears throat> I'll catch you guys in the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Peace out.